Grace to you and peace, dear friends, from God our Father and from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we begin an incredible journey that uh, really started with uh, the idea of one pastor a few years ago who was called to a new congregation and as he wrestled with uh, and talked with his uh, church council, he wrestled with, he wrestled with what, is, what is it exactly that he should do to make sure we're all on the same page. And so that is how this book, the story, came about. You know, perhaps the best way for us all to get on the same page is to reference the same material and know what we believe, teach, and confess as Christians. And like any good story, or if you like, or if you like watching movies, like any good story, any good movie, the best part, well, maybe it's not the best, but oftentimes the, the part of the movie that has the most information, the most impact, uh, is the beginning. If you miss the beginning of a movie, for example, whether you go to the theater or, or watch a video or see something on television, have you found that if you miss the beginning, even the first 10, 15 minutes, you're struggling the rest of the time during the film, trying to get caught up? You've noticed that? Well, it's the same way in the story about God. The story about God begins with the book of Genesis. And unless we figure out what's and understand what's happening in the very beginning of that story, we're going to be struggling the rest of the time trying to get caught up, trying to figure out what this is all about. You, one might even say that the book of Genesis begins with a big bang. Not big bang as in evolution, I'm not saying that, but Big Bang uh, in terms of God revealing his identity. It begins with creation. It begins with creation. God comes down to earth. He, be, he comes down because he wants to be with us. That's really the point of Genesis, after all, that God wants to be with us. He wants to interact with humanity. He wants to, uh, uh, to bring his upper story, the, the upper story in that his perfect plan for, for life or the universe, he wants to bring that down to our level and interact with us in the day-to-day -day aspects of our life, known as the lower story. He literally designed to bring heaven down to earth First, to create a paradise for humanity, for men and women, and then to create men and women in his own image, and then for him to come down and live with us. That was his plan. That was his plan, and that's really the point of Genesis after all. And if you, as we read through the story, uh, we see that. I mean, for example, the bottom of page two in the story talks about how God created us and wants to be with us. And just prior to that, we hear the beautiful picture of uh, almost, a, po almost a, a form of poetry, artistically how God put everything together. And it's, it's presented in a poetic way even in a very artistic way. For example, days one, two, and three are places created by God. Day one, uh, light and dark are created. Day two, we've got sky and water. Day three, we've got land. And then days four, five, and six are things that are created to inhabit those things. For example, day four, We've got the sun and the moon to occupy the light and the darkness. Day five, we've got birds and we've got fish. And that's the thing that occupies what was created in day two 
sky and water. And then day six, we've got animals and humanity that, are just, that were created to inhabit the land. See, the big, this big bang thing, if you will, the whole story, the whole point, the, 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 the climax really comes at the beginning is really about you. It's really about me. It concludes with God's, all of creation concludes with God's core passion. That is you. That is me. His core passion are people that are made in his image. And we see this in Adam and Eve. You see, of all the beauties of creation, if you look around, you travel, some of you have done some extensive traveling and seen some very beautiful things in all of creation. All of those things pale, are secondary compared to you, at least in God's eyes. And those of you, those of us who struggle with things like self-esteem, that should speak volumes to us. That everything, the most beautiful, majestic thing that you have ever seen, maybe it's, maybe it's the waterfalls in Yosemite National Park. Is the park open, by the way? Oh, that's another story. But uh, the most beautiful waterfalls in Yosemite National Park are half dome. Things that literally just take your breath away when you see them. In God's eyes, those things are secondary compared to you. They're secondary. But then trouble's afoot as we continue to read the story. Trouble is afoot. And that is what happens is rebellion. Adam and Eve fall. They fall. God tells Adam, he tells Adam, you can eat of any of the tree of the garden except this one tree here. Imagine this. There's a thousand trees out there. And God says, every single one of them you can eat of except one. Except one. And this is, we might call it the tale of two trees. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life are the main characters. And in Genesis chapter 2, that presents us with a little bit of a choice. Or at least presented them with a choice, I should say. Which one are they going to eat from? Which one are they going to stay away from? And God gave them the privilege of feasting on anything they wanted except that one tree. And all comes along someone I call Slewfoot, <laughs> the serpent, who says, God knows the day that you eat of this tree, pointing to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God knows the day of you eat of this, that you're going to be like him. You're not going to die. And so Adam and Eve rebelled against God. And they ate of this forbidden tree. And the vision that God had for people was ruined. Was ruined. The rest of, and this is what's so amazing. The rest of the Bible, I mean, we can stop it right there. And, but, and, and, and realize that the rest of the Bible is all about God trying to get us back. Trying to get us back. I mean, we blew it. Adam and Eve blew it. And the DNA of, 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 of every man, woman, and child born from Adam and Eve and that followed down the line all the way down to us. Our DNA has been scrambled. And we can't help but sin. It's who we are. We're sinners. We're sinful creatures. Sinful human beings. And what God intended just turned to jello in a matter of, well, we don't know how long it took. 
We don't know how much time transpired from the time God said, don't eat of this tree till they finally did it. As we read scripture, it happened in a moment, but in reality, we really don't know how long it took. But everything turned to jello. And you would think, at least I do, I would think that God would just say, well, like a little etch a sketch, let's just shake it up, make it all go away, and I'll start again. But no, he didn't do that. He tried it with Noah. He tried it with Noah, but he realized that he could to get rid of all the wicked people in the world, but sin was still present. So the rest of Scripture, the rest of the story, if you will, is all about God's love for you and me that is so deep that he is in hot pursuit to get us back. He talks about, the whole story talks about how God goes to great lengths to get us back. To do for us things that no one else can do. I mean, we read a little bit about that just a few minutes ago in our point in our psalm for the day. I mean, let's just take a look at the psalm. And this just because it talks about God's love for you and me and his desire to be with us no matter what. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You, you understand my thoughts from afar. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all of my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O oh Lord, you know it altogether. You hedge me in behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go to heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in hell, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. The psalmist is writing this about a people like you and me who sin again and again and again, who constantly break God's commandments, who constantly are falling short because of this DNA thing that we inherited. It's called the fall because we fell. We fell from paradise. We fell from the very place that God created for us. And because Adam and Eve chose a different vision than God's vision for them, sin became a part of our DNA and they produced more sinners. They had two children, two sons. <laughs> One ends up murdering the other. Wow. One ends up murdering the other. As I mentioned, Noah and the flood. The flood erased the wicked human race, but it didn't drown out sin. Even after Adam and Eve became aware of their nakedness, they knew what they had done was wrong, and they knew that they had to do everything possible to cover up their nakedness. They made for themselves fig leaves, sewed them together into a type of loincloth. But God showed them yet again the way in which he is going to save us. Though it's hidden, you have to dig. But what did God do? He sacrificed an animal. He sacrificed an animal and took the hide of the animal and made clothes, took the fig leaves away from Adam and Eve and gave them clothes for them to wear. Really giving us a picture that it's through a sacrifice that our nakedness is going to be covered too. That it's through a sacrifice that our sin is going to be covered. The shame and the guilt that we sometimes are plagued with. That God is going to cover it up. 
and give us another chance. You see, from this creation story, we discover the value of all human beings, man, woman, and child. And that is this, God wants to be with you. Think about that. God wants to be with you. God wants to personally be with you. And at a great, great, great cost to God, he has done everything possible to get you and I back. Yes, we still stumble, we still fall. But the sacrifice of the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world covers our nakedness. That sacrifice that he performed that covers our nakedness enables us to be with him. As you see, it's without, without that sacrifice, we are doomed. But with that sacrifice, we are covered. We are protected. That's how valuable you are to God. He's willing to sacrifice his own son, the very Lamb of God, for you and for me. And he gives that Lamb to us here at this table, this day, where Jesus himself said, take and eat, take and drink. This is for the forgiveness of your sins. I am so excited about this story, going through this. I'm so excited about what we're going to learn about God and his love for us. I'm so excited about what we're going to discover about ourselves and God's love for us. Because as we go through here, we'll find that Really, all of Scripture is one huge scar thread that ties everything together. That God is the main character and that we are the apple of his eye. Truly, are the apple of his eye. And that we'll learn that no matter who we are, no matter what we've done, no matter what we've become, God wants us back. And he will stop at nothing until he gets what he wants. And that's really about all that God is, is God getting what he wants. And he always gets what he wants. And what he wants is you. Because you are his core passion. You are the thing, his crowning achievement. Out of after he created everything, he looked at you and said, this is very good. And because of Jesus, he says that again. This is very good. Because of Jesus, he doesn't see your sin or my sin. He doesn't see your failures or my failures. All that he sees is the perfection, the perfect creation of his virgin-born son, Jesus. You are very good. So come and feast on the Lord. Receive what he has for you. And leave here strengthened and encouraged that you are God's core passion. That he has done all things for you. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, may keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.